Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a look at more R influenced syllable types with an O vowel sound. Okay, so we have a lot of variety of patterns with this word sort, making these words much easier to read than they are to spell. So I've got a couple of little tips, but some of these are words that you're just going to want to try and memorize a little bit. Okay. The trickiest one for me was thinking about this word part here, O-U-R, okay? When we typically think about O-U, we think about out or house, right? O-U, ow. When it's followed by an R, it's going to be more like this or sound, okay? Like in the word your, all right? Your book. So this one is going to have an OR sound to it. So find that header and go ahead and mark it up with that OR. This typically only happens when we've got that R right here that's controlling that sound. So it changes it from not an OUT sound to an OR sound. All because of that bossy R that's influencing the sound of those OUs. Okay. Then we've got O-A-R. Now when we think about that double vowel O-A, we normally think of the O sound, right? Like in the word boat or road. And this is getting colored by the sound, by that letter R too, but not quite as bad as this one here. This one also is going to say that OR sound, like in board, board. Okay, so I'm going to mark this one again. We've got our silent E right here that's going to color the sound of that or a little bit as well. But typically this is just not or, it's more just an or. This is typical kind of silent E pattern right there. We think about the word more, okay? So for the most part, you can think about this as a silent E pattern. That R just influences the sound a little bit, okay? And then we've got just a regular R-controlled vowel before the R right here, okay? And that's OR, like in form. So for the rest of these, I want you to just think with me, tap the sounds out, predict where they might go. When we're done, then you can take a look at the last screen as you, after you sort your words to check that your thinking matches mine, okay? So my first word is NORTH, not SOUTH, but NORTH. Tap that out with me. NORTH, NORTH. Which OR spelling do you think that is? This one's just a regular OR. My next word is STORM. Tap that out with me. STORM. STORM. This one also has just a regular OR. My next word is COURT. Like in the volleyball court or the basketball court. Tap that out with me. COURT. C-O-R-T. COURT. Okay. So this one's an unexpected one, you're thinking about this. And sometimes you might even spell them two different ways, right? So let's think about what that might even look like. If I were to do court with an O-A-R, or court with an O-U-R, which one of those most looks familiar to you? You're thinking this one, you've got it, right? Like a basketball court. My next word is tore. I tore a hole. Tore, t or. This one is a silent e spelling right here. This next word is or. And this is like a, a boat that you use an or in order to paddle. So like a paddle or. And this one's spelled with an O-A-R, okay? This is a multiple meaning word right there, or I'm sorry, a homophone. We think about or, an or, right? This is like either or, and then this is the or, like the paddle to help you in your boat, okay? So again, that's often why we have two different spellings, because if it's um, a different word meaning right there. My next word is sore, and it's the same idea right there. This is sore, like um, like I have an ouchie, okay? Um, ouch, it's sore. Versus I'm, I'm flying through the air, 
kind of a sore right there. Two different spellings. And this one here, sore, tap that out with me, or sore, follows that silent E pattern right there. When we think about, ouch, I'm sore. So if you're thinking, hey, there must be another way to spell this sore, like I'm flying through the air, you're right. This one's spelled with an O-A. Hey, my next word is sure. Tap that out with me. Sure. Sure. Again, you can write it lots of different ways. Is it going to be sure like this? Does that look right? Is it going to be sure like this? Does that look right? How about sure like this or sure like that? Which one looks right to you? Yeah, this one. My next word is thorn. Tap that out with me. Thorn. Thorn. And again, I can write that in lots of different ways. Thorn. Or, that's a silent E pattern, right? How do I even... Thorn? Hmm. No. I wouldn't have a silent E in the middle of the word, so I know that's wrong. Is it thorn like that? Is it thorn like this? Which one looks right to you? If you're thinking this one, you've got it. Just a regular OR on that. My next word is fourth. Tap that out with me. Fourth. Fourth. And this, when I think about the meaning of the word, I'm not first, not second, not third, but fourth. I would expect the word for to be in there, right? So how do you spell for? Not this is for you, right? We spell that one like this. So that can't be it. That's a homophone. For, is it for, or is it for? Which one of those is the number word for? Right, this one right here. And then we've got our TH at the end. Fourth. My next word is store. Tap that out with me. St or store, right? So again, I can write it lots of different ways. Is it store like that? Does that look right? We have a silent E at the end. Is that the word store? Store. Which one looks right to you? Right? I went to the store. My next word is, is four. And we actually already went through that one. There's our number word four. My next word is pork. Like pork comes from pig. So I look. I can write it this way. Pork. No, again, I wouldn't have a silent E in the middle of a word. Is it pork like that? And pork like that. Which one looks right? No, this one's just a regular OR right there. My next word is fort. Go ahead and tap that out with me. Fort. Fort. Like I built a fort in the, out of sticks or maybe a blanket fort. I know I like to do that. Fort. Let's try each one. Fort like that or fort. Ha! No silent e in the middle of a word. That's bonkers. Is it fort like this, or fort like this? No, oh, this is the number word for. Does it have anything to do with fort? Mm, it doesn't, so I don't think that's right. If you're thinking this one right here, you got it. It's the one that looks most right. Okay? My next word is roar. Tap that out with me. Roar, roar, roar like the lion gave a roar. And take a look at that in several different ways, right? So it roar like this. 
roar like that. Roar like this. Roar like that. The line gave a roar. Which one looks right? Yeah. We've got this one right here. Then O A R. The next word is war. Like I wore my shoes out in the mud and got them dirty. War. Tap that out with me. War. Oh, you might be thinking about like a battle war, right? And this one's actually spelled like that. It's like a battle war. Notice we got a different spelling that's not even in our headers for that one. Well, let's try out our headers. I wore my shoes. Or is it wore my shoes? Or wore my shoes. Or wore my shoes. Which one of those looks right? You're thinking about that silent E pattern right there. You got it. Okay. The next word is word. Tap that out with me. Word. Ooh, that doesn't match any of ours, right? So ORs. I'm going to stick this over here in an oddball right here. Can also make any of our, our controlled syllable types can also make that er sound, which makes our controlled syllable types so tricky, right? So if you remember anything, remember that there's always a vowel before the R in our controlled syllable types, okay? So there's word, like I wrote the word word, okay? My next word is poor. Go ahead and tap that out with me. Poor, poor. Okay, let's try that. Is it poor like this? Is it poor like this? Or poor like this? Or like this, which is going to be different than, and this is like pour, like I'm pouring water in the cup for, which is different than this pour, you're thinking somebody without a lot of money. Okay, another R controlled syllable type right there. Okay, so pour, you're thinking this looks most right, you got it. Okay, and our next word is hour, like it'll take us about an hour to get there. Go ahead and tap that out with me. Hour. Hmm. That doesn't follow any of our sounds, right? So this one is also an oddball over here. Even though it looks like or, or in the sense that O-U followed by an R makes the or sound. This is actually the opposite of how we started. It actually makes that ow sound. So it's super uncommon in our oddball category for OU to make that ow sound like an hour right there. We have a silent H in that word. Extra tricky word to spell. Um, so if you remember, OU says ow unless it's followed by an R. And then we've got, of course, those oddball expectations or ex exceptions right there. We're never going to have a silent E pattern in the middle of the word. And most of the time, we're going to use just our typical patterns. Okay. Thanks for thinking with me, guys. I know this one was tricky and we, we had a lot to think about. Make sure to check back and write your sort in your word work notebook.